This meeting is being recorded per Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B. Thank you, Kim. Welcome everyone to tonight's session of our September 14, 2021 meeting of the Weathersfield Historic District Commission. For those of you who have not been here before, tonight's session is composed of two parts, the public hearing and the public meeting. In the public hearing, we will ask each applicant in turn to come forward and explain their application in detail. This will give us an opportunity to clarify what you are proposing to do and for you to ask us any questions. Also, commissioners may voice an opinion or suggestion based on their own feelings. However, a vote is not taken until the public meeting following the public hearing. In the public meeting, which is not open to public comment, we will deliberate your application and decide how to act on it. We may approve it, we may approve it with stipulations, table it for further consideration, or in rare cases, we may deny it. You are welcome to stay for the public meeting, but need not do so. The results of tonight's meeting will be available at the Weathersfield Building Office tomorrow at 860-721-2839, anytime after 9 a.m. Please be advised that the Historic District Commission approval does not preclude your need for any other required approvals and permits such as zoning, inlands, wetlands, and building. Please contact the building department to review any other permits that may be required before you begin your construction. With this, I'll ask our clerk, Commissioner Lyons, to read the legal notice. Thank you. Legal notice, Town of Weathersfield Historic District Commission. The Weathersfield Historic District Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, September 14th, 2021 at 7.30 p.m. on the following applications seeking a certificate of appropriateness. Application 6071-21, John Petrick, seeking to construct a second story garage door with two Anderson Woodwright windows with chimney between, also remove shed on rear of garage at 164 Hartford Ave. Application 6072-21, Michael and Beth Adams, seeking to install a 12 by 14 cedar gazebo with aluminum roof in rear yard at 56 Marsh Street. Application 6073-21, Michael Fisher, seeking to replace a 26 inch high retaining walls in front yard with techno block mini serta wall in slate gray color at 38 Old Pewter Lane. Application 6074-21, renewal by Anderson, seeking to replace 22 windows in home with renewal by Anderson windows with full screens and grills between the glass. Also replace six doors at home with decorative glass doors and steel doors at 362 Middletown Ave. Application 6075-21, Anthony Tenor, seeking to install a 48 inch high black aluminum fence around perimeter of yard at 138 Church Street. App application 6076-21, Manuel Contractor LLC, seeking to construct a 12 foot by 19 foot covered carport on the right side of the existing garage at 17 Willard Street. Application 6077-21, Aaron Tupus, seeking to create a new entry in the left side of the building, paint new text on sign using existing hardware at 147 Main Street. Any residents interested in reviewing an application, speaking on an application, or wishes to listen to the meeting should email HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or call 860-721-2836 by 6 p.m. on the night of the meeting Please include your name, phone number, and address on the, on the email. Town of Weathersfield Historic District, Kim Wolf, duly authorized, dated at Weathersfield, Connecticut, this 30th day of August 2021. Thank you, Chris. For tonight's meeting, we're missing um, three of our regular members. And so I would invite our alternates, um, Mr. Hall and Mr. Craigow, to participate, um, of course, always in comments, but also in voting. So we will also uh, have um, Basak Miglis and who's also an alternate, I guess, and <laughs> um, Mr. Lyons and myself will all be voting. So all five members present. Turning to application 6071, the application at 164 Hartford Avenue, if you would give your name and address for the record, please. He's muted. John. Is this renewal by Anderson one? No. Um, no, sorry. No. It's John and John. Oh. There he is. Oh, there you go. Go. Sorry okay. about that. 
Uh, one sixty four Harper. Oh, we're breaking up now too. And frozen. Yeah. Let's give him a sec. See if he comes back or if he wants to try to load it on his phone. Oh, what's wrong with this thing? Okay, you're back. And gone. And gone again. All right, we're going to skip you. Um, our first application, Mr. Petrak. We're going to skip you and see if you can pull it up on another device. You are frozen on our devices. So we're going to move Sorry on. Sorry about that. Can I hear? Uh, 164 oh. Harper Dad. Okay. <laughs> like we might have you now. You have to go. Okay. I think we've got you. Yeah, if you the wanna... internet works better in the house, I think. Okay. Can you hear us? Yes. Yes. Can you hear us? Okay. Yeah. Uh, John and Alicia Petrick, 164 Harper Ave. Perfect. All right. So tell us about your project tonight. Uh, so we're in the process of, or we were in the process of doing an outdoor fireplace, uh, which I pulled permits through the town. Um, and then we're kind of stalemated because uh, I have to pull permits for the chimney through you guys because it's going to be visible for the street. And then uh, we're interested in putting two windows, one on each side of the, the uh, chimney and put a warmer out. This is terrible. It's okay. I'm having the same problem here. Someone just came, so the dock is parking. Just go I ahead. Thought, You're fine. Uh, and so we're trying to make, uh, we have a rec room above the garage now. Uh, we just wanted to add two windows so there was more light. Okay, so, and then two windows on the garage door side as well. Yes, ma'am. Okay, tell us about the windows. Uh, we chose the Anderson Woodwright series. Um, we noticed here in town, they look nice on some of the houses that are being used on. So we like to continue that look. And are they um, simulated divided light with the grids on the outside? All that, uh, you want to see Hi, this is Don Swoblin, Advanced Carpentry. The, the windows are going to be uh, two over two to match the existing house. So and they, so do they have grids they affixed do, on the no, outside? No, they do not. They're just two over two. It's two over two. Then it's the two panes are somehow divided. Yes, I'm sorry, but it's not... Uh, do they have a grid on the outside? No, the grid's on the inside. Only on the inside. Yes, sorry about that. So they sort of match the house. Yeah, they'll, they'll match the house, yes. Well, they don't match the house if they don't have actual grids on the outside. Our grids are, are the ones that we have now are in the inside. The, the grids are on the inside of the house. First class windows on that house. Sorry, what's that? I said that the windows on the house are not of the same level of um, actual appropriateness as a lot of other houses in the district. Tell me about the, um, the garage doors are staying the same? Yes, ma'am. And the roof is going to be in a pre approved color? that's yeah. on file with the town? Yes. And then you reference a staircase, but that will be on the back side. We're not going to be able to see that. Is that correct? That is correct. That's all already pre-existing. Okay. So we do get a pretty good look at this. Um, driving by, especially from the right side of your house, driving by. Um, and I assume the, so I'm looking at the computer generated picture that you have. The bump out for the new dormer is going to be sided in the same material that's on the lower portion. That's exactly right. The same, same siding and same color. It's 
Does anyone have any additional questions for the applicant? Most of this is, Sorry, most of this is well hidden from the street view. And the chimney is real brick though. Yes, ma'am, it's uh, colonial red. Okay, whose dog is that? Does anyone else have any questions for the applicant? Do you have any questions for us? Um, with the windows, I know there's some concern. Is there something that we need to follow with? Is I know you're considered about concerned about the grid or? Yeah, we're going to talk about that more. Um, you know, I would want an exterior applied grid if it wasn't true divided light in most circumstances. But if your grids are um, between the glass on the main body of your house, um, it makes it a more difficult push for us, I suppose. We're always looking for the best possible solution, but we're not, uh, we can't force you to have the best possible solution. It just has to be appropriate for your particular property. So we'll discuss that a little bit more in the public meeting. So we bought this house uh, five years and these windows were already pre-existing. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, so what are they I mean, if you like us to change the layout of the window to meet your specs, we're willing to do that. I don't want this to halt the, right. halt the construction, you know? Understood. All right. I ask a question, Don. Yes, sir. Just to be clear, are the dividers between the glass currently now, or are they inserts on the inside? Of They're the between window? the glass, Chris. They're GVLs. Okay, yeah. thank you. You got it. Okay. Hearing nothing further, thank you very much for coming in. We'll move on to application 6072, the application for 56 Marsh Street. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, it's Beth Adams, 56 Marsh Street. I am seeking approval for an already existing, it's already assembled, it's a 12 by 14 cedar gazebo and it has an aluminum roof. With no disrespect to this committee, I just never, it never occurred to me that I would need approval. So it is already assembled. It sits on our back patio, which is uh, stamped concrete. It's a freestanding structure. However, we do have it secured with four bolts <laughs> and those bolts are easily removed. So it's an interesting dilemma that we're having with all these readily available prefab patio coverings. They're popping up in various places and in certain locations, they really stand out, for instance, at your house because as you come around the corner, you have this beautiful view of your gorgeous property with all these great roof lines. And then you have this prefab, very low roof um, sort of sticking out in the middle of that beautiful picture now. Is there a spot for it further back in the yard that would be useful to you or it's where you want it? Yeah, it's definitely where we want it. It would have to sit on the stamped concrete. And right now it takes up most of the room on the stamped concrete. I, I don't see it being, us being able to put it in the grass, which is where it would, if it was back any further, that's where it would be. Okay, does anyone else have any questions? Nothing. Okay. Thanks so much for coming in. I appreciate your time. Thank you. We'll move on to application 6073, the application for 38 Old Pewter Lane. If you could give your name and address for the record, please. Jane, before we go on, do you want to ask for public input? Oh, you are right, Vasek. And I didn't do it on two of them now. Um, is there anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor or against the application 
for 164 Hartford Avenue. Hearing none, is there anyone for application 6072, the application at 56 Marsh Street, wishing to speak in favor or against this application? Hearing none, I will return, thank you Vasek, to 6073, the application at 38 Old Pewter Lane. Good afternoon, Michael Fisher of 38 Old Pewter Lane. Um, I'm looking to replace the existing um, stone retaining walls in the front of my house, which I believe are original to the house and um, crumbling as we speak. So I'm looking to replace them with a techo block uh, mini cradle wall in slate gray, shale gray, sorry. So I think everyone got an, a supplemental email this afternoon with we did not have a sample of the product and it's not something that we're familiar with. Um, but we did get a picture of the product um, with color samples that looked pretty good on the online link. My question is for you on that front facade that we're gonna see from the street so readily, it looks like they have um, sort of a pattern where there's three different lengths and there's a variety of heights. Are you um, going to mimic the narrow height of the natural stone product that you already have and vary the sizes? Um, I'm not 100% sure I understand the question. So the way it's laid out on the front facade, are they all going to be the same size or Correct. different sizes? Is that what you're asking? Yes. Um, that's a good question. I don't think we discussed that. We could do it either way. Um, so we're open to if one is preferred over the other. So what I saw was, I think, three different lengths, but then they're all a few inches high. Is that correct? Uh, I believe they're more than a few inches. I want to say probably about six. Okay. So it really is a more modern look than it's not seeking to replicate with a different product what's already there. Yeah, I mean, it's a different product. So it is a little bit more modern while trying to still make it look somewhat similar to what we have. So I have a question, is, is the stone itself actually crumbling or is simply what's holding it together crumbling? Both. So it's an old uh, blue stone and literally if you okay. like touch it, it just, it just disintegrates at this point. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Sure. Um, the blue stone is more of a problem, I guess, than the the stone wall that you see from the road. Was there ever any consideration to reuse the stone for the up and down that faces the road? I'm not sure the correct term. Um, and just rebuild what that's mounted on um, because it is original at all, or, or you know, is it? Our preference would be to replace it all with the new product. Okay. So I'm looking um, now I've got yet another device going and I'm looking at the um, cut sheet that we were given. So you think that there are uniform size stones that are probably six inches high or so. It, I mean, I'm just, I'm going off what I recall. I don't have, um, the pieces in front of me right now. Okay. Okay. Does anyone else have any other questions? Yes, I do, Jen. Can I, are you doing anything with the prefab concrete steps? Are you facing any of that or? No, those are staying, staying. as is. Okay. As are the, the railings, the railings. there. Yep. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, hearing nothing further, is there anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor or against this application? 
Hearing none, we'll move on to application 6074, the application at 362 Middletown Avenue. Hi, my name is Adam Nowakowski with Renewal by Anderson, representing Michael and one of my counterparts, Jessica Also, We're gonna be replacing a total of 22 windows. Existing right now are vinyl full frame windows. We're gonna be replacing them with the same alike design, full frame uh, Renewal by Anderson windows matching grid style. They will have the external grid. As of right now, those windows do have GBGs. They will be permanently attached. Let's try this again. Like my window here, so they'll be permanently attached on the outside. Great. There is a CAD drawing I can share with you with a scared screen. We are going to be adding one window right above the doorway. Would you mind if I share my screen and show you that? Please do. I'll need uh, to unlock it. Share yeah. in this meeting. Uh, you'll have, hold on one second, please. Okay, you should be able to now. Awesome, thank you. So here's the existing house right now. We'd be adding that top window. I know it's not a great schematic of it, but they'll be growing right above where the door is. Matching same pattern also with a six over six. They would also be adding the shutters that are on the existing windows. Now for so us, again, we only regulate the exterior um, appearance, but I'm curious as to the reason, if there's an interior reason for adding a window there. Which the aesthetic design that for, for Michael, of just adding that center window there, of having the five be more uniform with the top um, where the door is, that's the whole reason for that part there. Okay, so there's no interior goal that he's trying to achieve with the addition of this window. It's well, more light. Okay. Okay, let's, does yeah, anyone so have I'm a sharing question? screen right now also, I do have the schematics too of the entry door we'd be looking at. So again, as of right now is that white door. We'd be adding that with a storm door on top of it. So I, I, this is gonna be the main door or this is gonna be the storm door? That is the main door with the storm door in front of it. So it's showing the entry door and the storm door at the same exact time. Because okay. I was looking at the handle and it said that looks like a storm door handle. Correct. That's a storm door handle. You're 100% correct. Okay. Then behind that is an artistry glass door. So and this again, I door think my door. next screen shows that's the existing door right there. Mm -hmm. A little bit closer up for you. I'll go back to the other one. Was there any thought given to um, a door that would be more colonial looking, uh, even a reproduction like this house um, with divided lights on the top, even if you added some light, I, I see that the existing door has very small windows. Um, Correct. Instead of, you know, the full, artistic, I'm not sure what to call it, pseudo Victorian design, which doesn't really read with this particular house. You're talking about maybe like doing like a craftsman door or something of that nature? No, no. I think what Commissioner Wolf is more referring to is a more traditional panel door with some additional lights in it. Gotcha. Uh, I mean, the house is not craftsman, the house is not Victorian, uh, certainly a very decorative uh, piece of glasswork like this is more fitting in a late 19th century house. Uh, craftsman is early 20th century. Correct. With, special, with some uh, very distinct styling cues there, none of which this house has. Uh, this house reads like a traditional early 18th century house with the very symmetrical divisions uh, of the glass of the fenestration, including the door, 
the columns, the roof pitches all read pseudo early 19th century. Um, there are a fair number of doors and if the applicant is looking for more light inside from the front door, then there are certainly doors that would be period appropriate for that style of house, as well as satisfying any needs of more light inside. Okay. You know, I would be happy to send some examples to you slash the homeowner through uh, Kim Wolf. I think that'd be a, a great yeah. suggestion and we can revisit at least the front door and just maybe focus on as of right now, just the windows and the additional window above the door. And while, while I'm beating up on you about that. Go uh, ahead, I'm ready. Okay, You're, the representation you gave us of the window going in above the door. Yep. Showed the window larger than the adjacent windows. Is that correct? They will be the same size. Sometimes technology is not exactly perfect of exactly what we should be doing. Correct. Okay. Sorry. So I apologize okay. about that. It will be the same size as the adjacent windows. Correct. And also to have the six over six patterns yep. and also to have the complementing uh, shutters too. Yeah. The shutters that don't fit the windows. <laughs> They fit height-wise. Uh, they, they fit height-wise, but if you close them, there is no way that they would ever... But they're also, they're, they also are screwed into the house, I believe, so, I mean... That's fine. Uh, let's look at the um, doors on the back side of the house. Doors on the back side, I apologize. I'm going to share, stop sharing my screen for a second, jump back to you. Kim, would you happen to have those, Kim? Or Jessica, I'm sorry. We're looking at our um, package and there's... Thank you, I, I apologize. I'm yeah, I, can bring, different I can bring it up to share screen one moment. There's um, an image that has the front of the house and then image number two is a back door that is um, nine lights and then a back door that's just a plain panel door. And what are you seeking to replace those two with? The back panel door, I believe, is just a backside garage door. Yeah. And then the other six panel, the other nine panel door, I believe, would be in kind. And this, this is the back entry door. So new doors, but that look just like the ones that are there already. Correct. The only Sorry. one I think we're going to be adding to is the is the one in the front, which obviously is not exactly what you guys would like. The kitchen door. I'm sorry, this is Jessica. I'm with Renewal by Anderson as well. The um, back kitchen door, uh, I believe the picture was submitted when I dropped it off at Weathersfield um, City Hall. It is, uh, they're looking to put in a half stained glass uh, that's in the picture there with oh, a white okay. storm door. And that's replacing their current side kitchen door that um, currently has a grid pattern on the back side of the kitchen. Okay. So it's it's I the thought, same I size. It was um, an artifact of the other brochure, but in fact, it mimics the door that we have talked about on the front of the house with a half size window with the same um, ornamentation and beveled glass look in half size on the back of the house. Is that what you're asking for? Yes, you are correct. So image two, uh, the grids are being removed on that door. It's the same style door, but there will be, um, what they're looking to put in is that uh, ordnance glass in there. Image three, that side garage door is just replacing the current one with the same exact style and adding a side storm door to it. A storm door on the garage door too? Correct, just for functionability to have some airflow in there uh, when they're working in the garage. Okay, understood. And all three of those storm doors are full glass or full screen doors. Correct. Uh, the one in the kitchen is a, uh, the one in the garage is a partial. 
Uh, so it's it's a half of a uh, storm and half of the glass or being able to replace with the screen. And likewise in image two. Okay. So predictably, I guess we would have the same comments about the window in that back door as we had for the front door. Okay, yes, if we could receive um, any recommendations, that would be fantastic. We can go back through and, and kind of look over maybe, uh, you know, adapting the design, something to be more um, to the liking of the style of the home. Okay. So, and again, if we could maybe get possibly either the partial approval of just the windows first, we need to go back again for the doors at a different time. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Ms. Fur. Uh, question I have is if we're gonna look into making suggestions for more period appropriate doors, what is the goal of the homeowner? Is it more light? Is it something else? Um, I think there's two goals really that they're looking to achieve to make the aesthetic look, having more of um, a pop of color to the door. Uh, some of the neighbors in the area to the right and the left have an accented door. Um, so doing something with a color that'll maybe make the um, door stand out. And then also to, to get a little bit more light into the home because the stairwell is directly behind that front entrance door and it is uh, very dark. Okay, so, so obviously color, we're not going to uh, really regulate, uh, but certainly light is an issue. So. Okay. Correct. Yeah. So that's that's really the main um, idea. And then likewise in the kitchen, just to have a nice amount of light coming into the kitchen. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, anyone else have any questions? Hearing none. Just to be clear, else? Jen, I'm sorry. Sure. Are, are they re asking they are withdrawing the front and kitchen door? No, we're going to be ruling on it. I didn't ask you, Vasica. Or, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for your answer. I'm sorry. Are you asking? Are Jessica, you asking yes. Us? So okay. um, Adam mentioned that. So we we would like to do it, but we can actually do it in two phases. Just because for us, the doors actually do take a little bit longer to construct than the windows. So if we could do um, a partial, if that works on your end, where we could get approvals for the windows, that way we could have the windows starting to be made. And then we could also come back once we agree on a design for the doors at a later time uh, and move forward with the doors, if that works for you guys. That was a great answer, but I guess specifically, you know, we are ruling on what's submitted to us. So I, I guess I am asking you that, are you withdrawing your request for the doors? I when we get to the uh yeah we'll deal with it when we get there because i think some of their goals can be accomplished certainly a color pop yeah know. i wasn't quite sure though that we in the past that we partially can rule on an application is is that accurate or i didn't think we could that's correct yes but we can um deny and step out parts of it so it's not going to be a problem okay thank you thank you any members of the public we wishing to speak in favor or against Hearing none, we'll move on to application 6075, the application at 138 Church Street. Hi, we're Jennifer and Anthony Schnorr at 138 Church Street. And we are looking to put in a four foot black aluminum fence around extending out from the house and around the front of the house. So it's unusual. We usually see them fencing in the backyard, but you're fencing in your front yard. Um, yeah, just the way the property is laid out. We tend to play with the grandchildren a lot in the front yard and um, it just will make it safer to be out there with the children. And I appreciate that you gave us a plot plan so we can see where it is. 
Um, I like the fence. You've got two gates and you provided us a picture of what those are going to look like. We, we, picked, Jenny, we picked it all in accordance with um, the historic district and trying to be in keeping with the area. Does anyone have any questions or comments for the applicants? Gate there, gate there, gate there. No. No? Nope. Thank you. Hearing, hearing none, if there, do you have anything further for us? Applicants? No? no, I don't think so. Okay. Any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against? I just have one quick question. It's Kim. Uh, just make sure with zoning that the um, that the fence is an approved fence and the, the appropriate height and um, visibility, please. I think the visibility is going to be fine as long as the setback from the sidewalk or the road is <laughs> that's not our purview that will be the building department can discuss that with you right but there are no permits required for fences so it's up to the homeowner to um, do their due diligence so that they don't have to remove it okay right now the the fence that we're um proposing would have more than 50 percent visibility Is what I, don't, the, I don't know the zoning. I I'm just saying it just to so that everything all the for placement. I think you should double check with the placement too, just to be sure. Okay. I agree. I think the visibility is probably not an issue, but we don't regulate that, so I don't want you to think that our approval means you're good to go. Just mm -hmm. double check with the building department. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move on to application 6076, the application for 17 Willard. Hey everyone, I'm Claudia Manuel from Manuel Contract. How are you? Hi, welcome. My address is 35 Boston Road, Middletown, Connecticut. And I'm Representative David Apero, 17 Willard Street, Wethersfield, Connecticut. I am building a carport that's uh, 12 by 19. And uh, it's gonna have a uh, eight inch concrete slab four inch uh, process, three quarter stone base, three columns, six foot, four inches on center. Um, also on underneath the columns, I'm gonna put a 10 inch foot in, uh, sonnet tubes for footings, uh, 42 inches below frost light. And uh, gonna put a roof on top. The uh, shingles will match the ex existing shingles. And uh, the rafters are gonna be white as the other rafters of the garage. I don't know if you guys have pictures. Um, we do. We have everything that was submitted. Okay. So the Raptors will be painted white, the exact white um, that the homeowner has to match uh, the white from the existing garage. Um, we're also going to do um, white lattice going around, and it's not going to show anything from the road because it's behind the house. Um, we're going to put a um, expansion joint from the foundation of the garage. And um, that's pretty much it. I mean, we're going to use two by eight beam, double beam to support the uh, two by eight rafters. Um, it's going to be eight foot height. It's going to be, a, I think it's going to run out about 14 feet span from the ledger attached to the garage. If you look at the pictures there. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'd be glad to ask. Um, it is actually visible from the road, especially when you're um, approaching heading north, you're going to get a pretty good shot of it from the street. So uh, my concern is that lattice, um, yep. that's going to be wood. Yep. And is it going to be framed? Will it have a frame around it? If you want me to, I could do that. Um, I could frame it with like a two by three with a channel in the middle. So I can put that, slide it into a channel, and I can frame that that way, like a picture frame, if you like. Yeah, the raw edge on top is um, probably going to be a little unsightly. And you said the... I can, uh, I, I could, yeah, I can do the top and the bottom and the sides, if you like, and then I can put it in between the, the columns. Yep. 
So what that would give is that would give a visual support for the uh, lattice as right. well as a structural yes, support. Yes, yes. For structural support, it's going to straighten it up. Yes, correct. So it's not flimsy, doesn't break with the wind. Yep. Yeah. Or the um, do you, I can also paint, I'm going to also paint it white so it blends in with the trim, if that's okay. And I think all the other details are spelled out in the application. Um, we appreciate uh, the plot plan and the dimensions and everything being provided in advance. It's really helpful. Yep, absolutely. Does anyone else have any questions for this applicant? Hearing none, any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against? I do have a question. Sure. Um, for building permit, um, it did apply for the application. Um, do I, can I like, once it approves, can I send that over to the town hall? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you'll be able to go to the next step tomorrow morning. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Anything else? Hearing none, no members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against? We'll move on to the final application, application 6077 for 147 Main Street. Hi, I'm Erin Tupance, uh, 147 Main Street. Uh, we are in the process of applying for a change of use at 147 Main from residential to business. Um, through this uh, application and the process, it was determined that we need to make some accessibility modifications to the property uh, to accommodate people that are in wheelchairs or have some mobility issues. Um, in order to honor these requested ADA modifications, we've been asked to provide accessibility parking and an accessible route to the back room. I know you guys are familiar with the house uh, because the person that owned it before had some dealings with you guys. Um, what we're looking to do is really just expand the existing driveway out about 40 inches into the backyard and uh, pave a walkway connecting the driveway to that rear door. In order to make the rear door um, accessible to wheelchair, we have to expand it to 36 inches. Um, so we'll have to put, uh, we'll ex be expanding the door there. And uh, there is an area that I took a picture of, it's got some weeds in it, but um, that right now has some um, uh, plants that would need to be, I think they call it a cross, uh, I forget what they call it, but it would, uh, the, that would have to be paved also so that people could exit a vehicle if they were in a wheelchair, uh, like an unloading or a loading zone. So that would have to be striped. Um, most of this isn't super uh, visible to the street, but I know people that are walking may have some, um, may see it. Um, in addition, we're also looking to uh, use the existing sign hardware and uh, just use the old, uh, the basis of the old sign um, and just kind of repaint it. So yeah, that's the schematic. I know it's kind of hard to see, but basically what you're doing, we're, we would be um, expanding the driveway and um, creating a pathway for people to use to that back room that would allow for uh, someone to receive services that were in a wheelchair or had some mobility issues. Um, we do have to put a sign up at the end of the driveway just indicating that um, this is a wheelchair accessible parking space only and um, that's the back door that we would be expanding. We want to keep as much of the house intact as possible um, so we're going to try to keep what's there to the best of our ability. I don't really, I mean, I love the house. I don't want to, I want to keep it in, in, um, the way we've had it, the way it should, you know, the, it's in a historic district. Um, so really what we're looking to do is just expand to that area and where those plants are, we'd be needing to pave that, uh, and stripe it so that, uh, there's an unloading area for folks that are in wheelchairs. So it would have to be, you couldn't do um, like one of those, 
paver is not the right word, but a brick that also has open space and lets grass grow in it. It has to be a solid paved surface. I don't think we could have grass growing just because someone in a wheelchair would probably have a, a difficult time um, uh, functioning in something that had kind of grass growing up through it. I mean, I'm open to anything, but uh, the recommendations that we've gotten were more like a, just kind of creating an asphalt surface. And it has to be painted as well. It can't be just no, the only area that has to be painted or where those roses that area that you're looking at right now that would have to be not painted but striped that would have to be paved with asphalt as well and striped um, so that it is kept clear for people who are pulling in um, in a wheelchair accessible vehicle so they can unload most of them are um, side unloading not rear unloading. On that side of the house, there's no physical changes to the house at all. Is that correct? Nothing is no, nothing. Just the just the door. I just have to explain expand the door to fit, and that's in the back. But the side of the house, nothing will change to the house at all. Yeah, we can't actually see that. I walked by um, earlier today and took a good look at it. And so whatever happens around that corner, because of the narrow sight line of the property. Um, we're, we're really not going to be able to see that from any public view. And the sign is easy, of course, because it's essentially the same sign. Is the lettering you're going to use as pictured in what you gave us? Um, I mocked that up, but yes, very similar to that. I'd like to keep it simple. Um, I I'm, would like to call this the Blackbird House um, in honor of the town, really. Uh, I'm a Reiki practitioner and master and I um, would like to start, I'd like to have a little gift shop here. So it'd be a lot more foot traffic than anything, um, but it would be something similar to that, uh, yes. Okay. That is the old sign. Right. And I'd be using the existing um, hardware that's already in place. Perfect. Anyone else have questions? And basic, I would like to thank you very much. I got all the windows open. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best at what he does, no question. Okay. Anyone else have any questions on the commission? Any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Thank you for coming in. Hearing none, we'll move on. I'll take a motion to close the public hearing and open the public meeting. I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing and open the public meeting. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Chris, you're on mute right now. Chris Hall, that is. Aye. Thank you. Uh, move, returning to application 6071 at 164 Hartford Avenue. I think that, well. Uh, motion? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to approve with stipulations that the windows shall be simulated divided light, aluminum clad. I'll second. Okay. Uh, you know, the house unfortunately was not treated well by, I don't know whether it was the previous owner or the owner before that somehow managed to get the windows that are in the main house that are there now. Uh, I think this, I would love to see at some point this, a case of this tail wagging the main dog as opposed to vice versa. I agree, Vasek. Um, the general think, concept of what they presented. The homeowner seems to be open to that. The general concept of what they presented with the dormers, with the massing of the dormer on the garage there, the windows breaking up the front facade, I think is a wonderful move. Uh, overall, I think it will be a very, a very good improvement to the structure that's there. The structure that's there now, because of lack of windows on the second floor, is looks very top heavy and sort of awkward as far as 
it's massing goats. And I think this will go a long way to helping alleviate that. Um, yeah, the chimney that's, that was drawn is certainly appropriate for a building of that size. And I think it would work well too. Um, to your point, Vasek, um, we were not able to find an application for those front windows. Kim's going to do a little more research. Um, and it, it may be that they were uh, done at some point without approval. I um, so I do, I agree with you wholeheartedly. The applicant seems open to um, an improvement in that window with the true divided or simulated divided light. And I think, um, you know, down the road, as work continues on the property, um, who knows what may happen in the future. And as we're gonna see on 362 Middletown Avenue, new construction windows don't last all that long. You're exactly right. <laughs> all right, um, anyone else, any further comments? Yeah, I disagree. I agree with Vasek, uh, because it it, um, it definitely improves that, how, that not house, but garage to match the house. And if the people ever want to improve the house, that building will have already been done correctly. Yep. Agreed. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the uh, application is approved with simulations. Application 607256 Marsh Street. I'll make a motion to prove is submitted. I'll second it. Uh, I'm struggling with this one. I am um, too. For all the reasons stated. I like to think that this is a temporary modification. Um, you know, it, I think the house would look great with an open pergola style, uh, white wood framed pergola on the back. Do I think that this is inappropriate? Perhaps not, um, you know, it, it, not our best solution, but not inappropriate. Not the best solution. However, keep in mind that we're, we're not dealing with a 19th century house. We're dealing with a very late 20th century house built on a relatively prominent uh, corner. However, the house, because of several decisions made at the time of construction, does not read as a period house. It does read as a relatively new structure. So I don't think that the low pitched roof on a what is essentially an outbuilding uh, is inappropriate for that property. Uh, and and exactly your point, Vasek, you know, for future reference, that same prefab gazebo that we see popping up everywhere may not be appropriate on another home of an earlier vintage. I agree with that. Uh, All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Hearing none, the motion carries. The application is approved. Application 6073, 38 Old Pewter Lane. Oh. I'm gonna make a motion to table. I would wholeheartedly second that. Okay, so yeah. here's my reason. I'm, I'm not necessarily opposed to a, a prefab product if it's a good one in this location. The stoop on the house is a um, poured concrete it's a concrete prefab. Um, so I think something in between what they have and that stoop might look fine, but I think we need some more details about um, the sizing and the placement of the stones, because I guess I don't think something with a, a six inch or more facade profile, all the same size is really gonna do a good job of duplicating what's there. And maybe it also gives them a chance to see what other options they have for fixing what they have. Like Chris Hall said, um, you know, there might be other solutions that work better. Yeah. The, the thing that we're missing from the application 
I mean, we have all these wonderful computer generated pictures that sort of indicate what it's going to look like. However, we don't have either a cut sheet or a photograph of the actual product. And a computer generated thing can be written off as, oh, it was close, but what's this thing really going to look like? And that's my big concern. And I think it gives us a chance to get a sample too. Hopefully it will. And I was wondering about the railing. He said he was going to retain the railing, but I don't know if that meant retain the original. He said yes. He said yes, uh, Chris. Because that's the stairs and the, and the uh, railing are staying. That's what's different in the rendering. The original is raw iron, more, more, more um, matching to the air of the house, whereas this is a more modern one i went by and i took a picture today um that's why i was wondering well i yeah, think that speaks to vasek's point that the computer generated rendering doesn't really serve us um we need something a little better to look at i mean the computer generated rendering is falling off the stairs anyway so <laughs> uh, all those in favor of tabling please say aye 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 opposed hearing none the application is tabled Application 6074, the application at 362 Middletown Avenue. I'll make a motion to approve with the stipulation that the doors will remain as they are. Or the stipulation is the door shall not be changed. And the reason for that stipulation is because the applicants would like to move forward with the ordering of the windows. The doors are still in flux. Um, before you go too far, I will second the motion um, and then go ahead. Yeah, so we have already signaled to the applicant that a, a different door would be acceptable. And when they make a decision as to what they want to go with and work it out between the contractor and the homeowner, then they can come in and make an amendment to the uh, application. Great. Uh, the balance of the application, the windows um, are actually an improvement because they said that they will have external grids and the current windows that they have um, do not. So that, that's actually gonna be an improvement as well, which we always welcome. Are you addressing the window on the second floor over the door? I'm good with it. Um, a, the house is a five bay house, i.e. there's five rows of fenestration across the front. Uh, putting a window on the second floor is certainly not inappropriate for that style building. Um, yeah. And right, so that portion is as submitted. As long as it fits, it's not inappropriate. Uh, is it appropriate to be have no window there too? Yes, it is. It was done always, but uh, either one would work. And I don't think it will Contrary to, I think, what the homeowner thinks, I don't think it's going to add or detract much either way. But that's my opinion. Thank you, Vasek. All those in favor, say aye. 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 The application is approved with stipulation. Moving to application 6075, the application for 138 Church Street may have a motion. Make a, proof, make a motion to approve as submitted. I'll second. I like the fence. It, it's an odd, um, you know, setup in the backyard as it currently is. So I understand the placement, um, you know, again, with the caveat that they make sure the placement is fine with the town from um, a zoning or building department issue. And you know, a metal, a metal fence in the front yard is 
not an anomaly within the district. There are many examples of them. I can think of one, two doors down from me. Uh, certainly we have uh, the B&B &B on Broad Street, which is a metal fence around the entire property. Uh, very different scale, but uh, it's certainly not inappropriate. Agreed. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Application 6076, the application for 17 Willard Street. Do all the work, Chris. <laughs> I'll make a motion that the application be approved with the stipulation that the lattice be framed. May I have a I'll second? second that. Thank you. Um, I think it's an entirely appropriate um, addition to the garage. It has a minimal impact on the district in its location. You do get a glancing view of it as you drive by, but really what you'll mostly see is a continuation of that roof and the same material that's already there. Actually, the other plus side is it's gonna disguise the joint of the T111 on the side of the garage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 The motion is approved, uh, nay, hearing none. The application is approved with the stipulation. Application 6077, 147 Main Street. So I'll make a motion to approve is submitted. Sure. Do you have another motion, Vasek? Second. Okay. Uh, so it's the sign, the paving, mm -hmm. and the rest of it is not visible from the public way, right? Correct. The door we cannot see. Okay. Yeah. So, so the building has always been a mixed use building and, um, you know, we're subject to modern day ADA requirements. Um, that don't have a, a great amount of flexibility, frankly. Um, you know, we're not looking at a ramp or anything like that. And as you said, um, the real changes to the structure itself are not visible. I think the sign is essentially the sign that was there before in the mock-up that we saw will be lovely. It is a little Witch of Blackbird Pond nod, which we appreciate. Um, so I think it's an entirely appropriate project for the new use of the building. Anyone else? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Moving on to the approval of the minutes from August 10. Do we have the people we need? Everyone was there. Okay. So I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of August 10, 2021. I have a second. I'll second. With our usual comments of gratitude to Linda and to Kim on their excellent efforts on our behalf, all those in favor say aye. 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 Minutes are approved. Kim, any other public comments on general matters to the historic district tonight? We do. We have one um, for, let's see, Victoria, are you on? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Victoria. I am from Freedom Forever. Uh, we spoke uh, last month regarding the solar panel project for 19 Middletown Ave. Um, I just wanted to discuss the changes that we did make that um, was requested. Our design team was able to put it together. Uh, we were able to stop you for a minute. I need your uh, first and last name and your business address for the record, please. Oh, sure. Sorry. Victoria Steves, uh, Freedom Forever at 68 Gold Street, Agawam, Massachusetts. Okay. So we denied the application because the solar panels um, were on the front of the building and had a pattern in them. Um, we talked about uh, being interested in something that was on the back of the building only because of the uh, more glancing view from Spring Street. 
Um, my understanding is that you spoke with Kim and came in with another application with the same panels on the front of the building. Is that correct? We ended up having to keep the panels on the front because like I discussed during one of our first meetings, if we take any of the panels off the front, um, we will lose the productivity for the customer. And none of the, I did get confirmation from a site audit that we did perform that all the panels, can, all any panels cannot go on any detached structures, including the one that's in the back for the, over the porch or the little layout that's in the back that's attached to the house. No panels can go on that. They just are structurally not able to hold any of the panels and it wouldn't be product, pro, there wouldn't be enough production for them to be back there because the production is mainly in the front of the house. Um, what we did do was we did make the panel outline more appealing to the eye. We did do the black on black panels like okay. asked. We can't, we can't really discuss the specifics of it, of, your, of what you brought to Kim because a determination was made that it was essentially laying out the same panels on the front of the house and it wasn't a substantially different application. We're, we are not permitted to revisit the same application within the same year. If you want to come back in with the same panels on the front of the house, um, you're going to have to wait until next year. Okay, I will inform the homeowner that it was denied. It's not denied. We're not voting on it. We do not have an application in front of us. If you you did deny to... it last the last meeting, though, I hear. Correct. So I was just trying to bring to the fourth that we did everything you guys asked except taking any panels off the front, which would not be sufficient to productivity of actually getting solar paneling. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. I see we've got a handful of other people. Are there other people who are here? We do. To we have, we have another, um, we have another um, pre-app question and I think they're on, if they, Want to unmute Linda? <laughs> Hello. Um, no, we're not. We're not prepared yet. I just came to tonight's meeting to see um, how it all works and to be familiar with uh, the process. Do you so want to? Do you want to bring up anything at all? I have your address up if you want to informally have a conversation. It's up to sure. you. Sure, we're at uh, 223 Garden Street and we purchased the house in uh, last October. Um, it needs a lot of work inside yeah, and out. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, it's, a, it's a big project. Uh, we have a lot of plans that we would like to, to do to uh, improve on the, the house and the comfort of living in the house. Um, so we will be coming forward when we have more details of what we wanna do. And we did just find out that the house is, is listed in the, um, the freezes that are at the academy, um, at the museum there on the wall. So we did, we weren't even aware it was the James Pratt House. Uh, so we were very excited about that. It's and, a beautiful piece of property, and we're excited to have somebody who's interested <laughs> in um, giving it back to some of its prior glory. It's got such yeah. potential. And and also making it a little more modernized. Uh, uh, for the comforts of home so yeah but your real estate That's agent told you right it's got potential <laughs> <laughs> isn't that what they always say yeah. we will, i'll tell you that our resident expert on uh wood windows and keeping them functioning in a way that makes you love them still is vasic and he's very generous with his time and we offer him up willy-nilly to people who um, need some help with windows like yours. So uh, feel free to touch base with Kim if you um, want to talk to him at all informally. Well, I think we might, we might take you up on that. I appreciate that. 
And I know, and, and I look at the house and I see how the outside of the windows haven't been painted properly. It just, it just does not look as good as it could look. So we do have, we realize we have a lot of work to do. We're still doing a lot of work on the inside. Um, and, you know, we hope to get to the outside in the, in the future. So thank you. Come back anytime with questions and Kim um, is a great resource and she'll help you anytime too. All right. Thank Thanks you so all. <laughs> Kim, do we have anybody else tonight? No, after I just pressured her into speaking, I think I <laughs> just keep my mouth shut now. <laughs> she might have had something she wanted to ask and you opened it up, so it's fine. Do we have any correspondence tonight? No, we don't have any. Okay. So I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thanks so much again for your time, everyone. Have a good night.